Hello and thank you for tuning in to this guide on the O-ring modem, the IAR-142-3G or for that matter the 4G model. We're looking at remote access today to sites, whether it be to get onto the local network for HMI and PLC configuration, monitoring, or to software download. So I'll start with the modem and to configure this first we need to go plug it in directly to your PC and to set up your PC correctly I shall show you in your local Ethernet port using the IPv4 settings. I've set my IP address as really any IP address on the 192.168.10 subnet and the modem of course I've put in the sub in sorry in the default gateway. So 192.168.10.1. Once that's set up uh, we can then see I've got a uh, local area connection network 88 up and going. Okay so I will log into the modem using a web browser and the modem's IP address of course is 192.168.10.1 and we need to log in so username is admin password is admin and here we go so the modem's been powered up for five minutes it has no WAN IP address so this is the 3G or 4G IP address that it will be public so we'll go through and set this up the first thing to do is to uh, go to the basic settings and we'll go to WAN and here you can see the modem can be used for different applications. Today we're using this particular modem as a 3G connection. So very important is the phone number for the modem to actually dial out to. Now all modems in Australia are going to be the same which is star 99 hash. We have a Telstra SIM card inside the modem so we're going to use Telstra.extranet. The reason we're using .extranet is because we have an extranet server applied to the SIM and this enables us to have a public IP address. Now it is dynamic so it will change, it's not static unfortunately, but there's ways around that and I'll show you in a second. The next thing to look at is um, just some of the status connections we have. So we have auto connect, reconnect on failure and fast mode. So um, three things to look at uh, depending how you're using it. Normally it should all be enabled. And the last one is dual Ethernet or LAN ports. So I'm going to enable that because by default the device has one WAN and one LAN port. By ticking that it allows us to have two LAN ports so really just an unmanaged switch. Now I shall save that and once saved we can click connect and we'll allow it to do its thing and if we watch up the top here soon we'll see if it um, populates with an IP address. Great, and as you can see, it has come up with a WAN IP address of 120.157.31.184. So moving on to the next setting, which would be the LAN ports, just to ensure that we have the right IP address set. Of course, this is the one we use to log into it initially. Um, if you're unsure of what the IP address will be when you first get the device in the box, just have a look at the guide. It shows you there how to log in. Next thing to look at is the DHCP server. By default, uh, it is enabled using dot two to dot one hundred IP addresses, and that will be assigned to any device connected um, what, via the wireless access point node that it has built in, or via the Ethernet ports. So the next thing we need to do is look at Dyn DNS. Now to configure this, we simply enable the service. Now I've used DynDNS.org, but you can alternatively use NoIP.com. To create your account, you need to go to dynedns.org, use some credentials, and the credentials you've made there, I'm going to put into the modem here. So my username, my password, and of course the static host name that I've chosen to use. And I'll click apply. And there we have it. All right. So the last thing we need to do is just confirm that we can get remote access to the modem. So first of all, I need to enable remote management. So we'll click enable and this allows us to access uh, via the internet uh, this page, this GUI or this configuration page that we're looking at. And the second thing I'll do is I'll enable ping just for demo purposes. But it's, um, it's good that it, by default it's actually disabled which means it gives you a high level of security. So we'll click apply, it's an easy, port number 81, apply. And there we go. So now if I bring up uh, CMD and I go ping 120.157.31.184, we should gain access to it. And there we have. So we can ping it. 
and now I can try and do the same thing from another web page 81 so through the internet I'm gaining access to the modem uh, via the public IP address and there we have it so I've got connection which is really great and the final thing we need to double check is of course the static host name which is control logic dot grot DNS dot com colon 81 and with any luck we should be able to get to the same page and here we go so that concludes part one of this two-part series on connecting uh, to remote sites via the O-Ring modem using OpenVPN. On the next one we'll go through the OpenVPN settings and show you how that's done in detail. So thank you and I hope you join in for the next one.